steaming its way through the deep waters of the Cape Fear River, the John W. Brown looks almost exactly as she did toward the end of World War II. Despite the great pain and guns, she's not a warship, but a cargo ship that carried up to 9,000 tons of cargo, with everything from beans to bullets. Despite the cold winds, a group of Liberty Ship veterans gathered at the dock to be reunited with their bittersweet memories. I stepped off the Niels Paulson. I swore that if I lived to be a thousand years old, I'd never get on one of these the Liberty ships again. And here it is. I can't wait to go on board again and take a look at it down the engine room, especially. When I saw a gentleman come up, 40 years old, and behind him with his father, and his father got up on that gangway and cried. What, what is with some of these ships? After being launched, Liberty ships were manned by civilian crews, seamen and officers licensed by the U.S. Coast Guard. During wartime, 2,700 identical cargo-carrying ships were considered key to the Allied victory. And before the conflict was over, hundreds were sunk. The Brown and others like her were equipped with naval guns, but it was for defensive purposes only. The sinkings then, uh, there was no protection against submarine uh, submarines. They didn't have these surface guns aboard the ships. They weren't armed. And when a submarine expanded, uh, uh, got rid of all their, their torpedoes, uh, then they would come to the surface and just sit there and shell uh, the ships until they sunk. Uh, there was no, and, and uh, they were sitting ducks. Because of its location as a port city, Wilmington was a natural choice for production of Liberty ships during the war. We, of course, uh, are a direct link with the Atlantic Ocean, and it made it a very, uh, logistically, a very logical place to build ships. Plus, we had a shipbuilding tradition. We built a lot of ships here during World War I. Pictures of the shipyards during the late 1930s show a bustling operation involving thousands of workers. With the Liberty ship's simple design and the availability of prefabricated parts, Builders could turn out an entire ship in about seven days. The feeling I get from talking with people is that they took tremendous pride in their work and seeing just how quickly they could get the job done. Of course, they had the enemy. They had Hitler and Mussolini and Tojo and all those folks, and so they were um, a highly motivated workforce. The John W. Brown is considered both lucky and unique. Not only did she survive the war as a cargo vessel, but she also served as a troop-carrying vessel as well in the invasions of southern France and Italy. The Brown is currently staffed by 49 volunteers. Most of them are retired seamen. And according to veterans, visitors coming on board are in for a real... This is Newsbreak. I'm Beth Tuck.